All right, so here are the 10 pieces of 1x3 I've salvaged from a bed frame. This back piece of plywood is a half inch thick, and it's a piece from a water bed frame that my father had made. Super important for me that it's been in, that it's in there. Kind of helps me feel like I'm lifting with him. These are sections of plywood. It's basically scrap plywood. Essentially, you would want three six foot sections of plywood. And then these are 320 pound carabiners, the two of them, and then you have four. U-bolts that will be the attachments for the bands. These are 16 by 16 landscaping tiles. You'll actually need three of them. Only two are shown. And these are nine 2 by 4s You will also need one 2 by 3 Most of those are going to be for the for the base of the platform. And then what we're going to move into is you're going to be laying down your six feet pieces of plywood to make sure that you glue them all together. So you'll lay one on top of the other in kind of a sandwich. So here's the first section, six foot by two foot. And lay the second one on top and then the third one. You're going to want to glue each section and then make sure that you're laying them down to, to make sure they glue overnight. This is the base of the platform. Okay, during this section of the build, I am laying down the three sections of plywood that I have been glued together laying that down making sure that that is centered on both ends to make sure that there there's gonna end up being a little bit of a gap to make sure that this is again trying to be cost-effective making sure that you're using as much as you need without too much extra and I explain why the the gap that you're gonna find is gonna be okay I'm laying these boards down you're gonna end up putting as much glue as you feel comfortable with on top of it just to make sure that as you lay the two by four, the eight foot two by four sections for the base across the top of it, that they're going to be stuck down and glued down uh, fully. You'll end up screwing those down so you don't necessarily need glue, but the extra contact really will help. These boards will be laid. There is six two by fours in total. There's going to be three, three laid down, and then there's going to be a 2x3 in the center followed by another three 2x4s so the 2x3 will be the centered board because the 2x4 is not actually 4 inches wide it's more along the lines of 3.5 inches wide once you get these all laid down you'll end up making sure that you get them centered properly you're depending on the quality of lumber that you use you might actually need to use something where you put weight on top and you might clamp them down and then you are going to put clamps on one side and the other to make sure that the boards are compressed together. Because depending on the way that boards move, you you might end up using screws right away. I was able to lay down plates and make sure that the the boards and the glue were set before I screwed things down. That way the boards didn't move while I was screwing them down. But <clears throat> again, this is why quality lumber does help out a little bit better. These 2x4s were two ninety two a piece though, which is kind of pricey for lumber right now. But you could you could essentially you know make sure that you you obviously don't want any type of warping or bending in the boards so try to make sure that you are finding level boards when you are searching them out it can just take you a little bit longer at the at the lumber yard or at the hardware store depending on where you're going to get your wood but laying these down make sure that they're nice and even on both ends you want to make sure that they're level square and again because i mean you you really want to make sure that you are the force is applied evenly there's and they're just evenly distributed on both ends. So what you're going to see is a little bit more of an elapsed version of that. And I'm trying to find, I'm trying to make sure that I'm measuring everything out properly. So please enjoy. And in the next segment, we will cover what happens next. Alright, sorry about that, so my phone died, uh, basically all you saw 
or what's left of what you saw is this just putting pressure on after I glued down the boards to the plywood and to the base. Now as you can see there's a little bit of a gap right in here which structurally I mean as far as because the pieces are attached together and when force is generated from the bands it's going to rise up like this that is going to make things a little bit weaker however I had nothing that I was going to attach this base to I could put another piece of plywood underneath this screw it here and screw it there and essentially add more flexibility and it might be the case depending on the band tension and I'll I won't be able to find that out until really I start the process however with the thickness of of the 2x4s themselves it is going to be very structurally sound now what I did was I took the there's a last section of four feet bore four feet of 2x4 because I cropped this off at two feet cut that into cut the remaining four foot section into one foot boards that are now on top and glued and I will be adding screws to this to make sure that it is tight, structurally sound, and, and very well put together. But as you can see, the four intersections. Now, to to save money, essentially, a, a deadlift platform could just be a series, depending on which you know which wood you get. I got quality lumber, so these boards are were $2.92 a piece, which is kind of expensive even for the semi-premium uh, construction wood. But you could essentially piece, I used six 2x4s and one 1x3 to make the 24 inch piece. You could just get those seven and you would have a, a decent structure as far as a platform goes and to be able to handle the compression but just kind of waiting for this glue to dry and then over here you're again trying to save money be economical this is the 16 by 16 landscaping tile <clears throat> which when I laid the bar down I figured on two of these however once I laid the bar down the if I were to be superhuman the end of the bar and the end of the plates would essentially come here so forward thinking and just kind of making sure that in any case even if the bar slid over a little bit or bounced a little bit I would have a, uh, added cushioning to make sure that if the bar did move that I would be able to to make sure that there it wouldn't smash on the wood so I took another got another landscaping tile 16 by 16 cut it in half and I will, this will go on one end, this will go on the other end, that will be 2 feet 24 by 16. And then this nice little groove here, which I'll make sure is, <clears throat> is centered where I want the bar. It will essentially allow the, the weights to sit in there. Now if I, if I didn't want that or somebody didn't want that, you, <clears throat> you could just... As far as these that come from Menards, you could just lay it on this section and then you wouldn't really have you wouldn't really have that much of an issue with plates falling into the groove. But again, I mean if you were to use one plate you might roll into here. Alright, so back to the deadlift platform. I removed the weights, I haven't screwed down the landscaping tiles or nailed them down, excuse me. As far as the what's happened so far, I removed the weights so that after the glue dried, I added some screws to where there's going to be torque as far as the where the band attachments are going to go on these boards, and then screws along the inside. Because of this little gap right in here, I wanted to make sure that again any type of torque where the platform will be lifted up and bent in, there's screws right on the outer edge so that the torque can be lessened because there's less of an angle or there's less of a, less of an area as to where as to how much torque is applied and, and where it's applied so that I'm not creating a long torque angle to allow it to 
to allow it to basically rip the board off of the platform or create a to where the glue is loose so screw here and then a screw on the inner board not there's no real logic to that just decided to put another screw there basically to help hold it down <clears throat> and now I am in the process of centering the landscaping tiles to make sure that they are centered on the platform and also that they're not hanging over the, any of the edges the bar is not really centered across these it's basically just a, a way to hold these down I was gonna use glue but basically I have nails I figure as far as the project goes save a few dollars most people will have nails you don't necessarily need to nail these down but uh, you can you can nail them down and make sure that they don't move one of the other things that I thought about doing was just kind of framing them in along the outside here <clears throat> and to add some more structural support I may possibly run a board along the outer seam here and nail it or excuse me screw it into the boards here and I would essentially stand that board up these boards are laid flat I would probably I would stand up a 2 by 4 on its end to make sure that the again with force with the way that the force and torque would work on the board itself there's a thicker surface that the torque would end up forcing itself through so and I could just be BSing here. That might not that might not be the case, but in my mind it works out, so I may put a board along here and then the same on the back side. But we'll see what happens when I actually get bands attached. I mean I'm not really sure how much band tension I'm going to have. Alright, so I've got the platform lifted up and <clears throat> it's basically just leaning against the wall. I have drilled the pilot hole for these pilot holes. Uh, <clears throat> all I did is, as you can see, I marked it off with a marker, just kind of imprinted it. Then I used my three-quarter inch spade bit, wherever that went, and <clears throat> I probably should have done the, marked it out with these first, drilled these holes, and then did the spade bit on top of it. Fortunately, my uh, abilities with construction are continuing to... I'm continuing to learn and screw up at the same time, but that's the fun about a do-it-yourself project. So all four on each corner, or on each, on each end. I am putting these U-bolts in, and then I make sure that they are flush with the ground. I would probably, I could have used a washer, however, I didn't really think ahead. So I will most likely just glue these in using wood glue just fill that hole up fill them both up and the garage of lifting dad sweet Thomas the train oh yeah here's what we have so it's stained I just put it like a two-in-one polyurethane stain uh, you can get it at Walmart or Menards any any home improvement store for about ten dollars again just one of those things where a finishing touch it doesn't need to be done I mean it doesn't really make it look that much better but so I tack down the landscaping tiles I put on the center boards and glued them down I have to nail them down the glue didn't seem to adhere as well as I wanted even though I put weights on them and then <clears throat> one of the things that I'm, I am going to do is there's a potential for the bar to roll back this way and because this is a, a depressed area or recessed whatever the term would be I'm going to either put I think I'm going to put a 2x4 piece here and run it across so that the barbell doesn't roll off forward or backward but other than that this is the deadlift platform